How to be assertive in a confrontation or an uncomfortable conversation. We've talked in the earlier videos about what kind of speaker you are. So now you know you're either a passive speaker, an aggressive speaker, or hopefully what our goal is is to be an assertive speaker. In this video, I want to ask you lots of questions about your last confrontation so that you can discover for yourself what kind of speaker you are and how you can work toward being the kind of speaker you want to be, especially in a confrontation or uncomfortable conversation. Let's get started. You've discovered what kind of speaker you are. Now I want you to think about your last confrontation. For me, it was when I was going to renew my health insurance and I called up to do so and they said I needed to basically just update some information. As I was doing that, I realized I had a question, so I called back my health insurance company and I had a different agent on the phone and that agent said, oh, well, in order to do this, you're going to have to fill out a 10-page form. It will take you about an hour or so to do that. But that was not what I was told by the previous agent and the way that I was proceeding. So instantly I started to feel, my, feel myself get anxious and get angry. And I wanted to attack this person. But I took a step back and listened to him. What he then went to say was, well, I worked for the California State Department of Insurance and I know what I'm talking about. You have to fill out this 10 page form. At which point I got angrier. However, because I'm a voice and speech coach and because I try to practice what I preach, I try to stay, take a step back, breathe, get centered in my body, think about what was really important, listen to him, and then proceed along from there. What I'd like you to do is think about your last confrontation and answer these questions which I have written up right here. First is, what happened? So in my example, it was there was a misunderstanding about what was necessary in order to renew my health insurance. And the misunderstanding uh, made me feel that I was stupid or didn't know what I was talking about because he was saying that he knew for sure what that was. Number two, what triggered you? Was it to being more aggressive or to being more passive? Well, in this situation, I started to feel more aggressive. I wanted to overpower the agent with my voice, with my words, with my thoughts. What was it like for you? Number three, how did the other person respond? Well, in this case, I took that step back. I thought about what was really important and realized perhaps even though he was telling me that he knew what he was talking about, that he had the experience to be absolutely sure that I was wrong and had to fill out this long questionnaire. I took a step back and thought, maybe he's not right. Maybe what the other agent told me was correct. What's really important? Is it proving that he's wrong? Proving that I'm right? Proving that he's stupid? Or letting him talk and then waiting to speak to a different agent, his manager. What was it like for you? Number four, what was the resolution for you? Did you end up burning that bridge with that person? Did you end up hanging up in, uh, in a gruff way with that person? Did you then maybe feel bad that you didn't if you were a passive, feel bad that you didn't express what you wanted to express with that person. So what was it like for you? In my case, as I said, I, I let him talk and I thought, no, I'll uh, speak to somebody else and see if I can get a different answer. In fact, the answer that I wanted. And I was trying to be polite and respectful while I did that. Number five, how did you feel about that? Did you feel that you did a good job? Did you feel that you could have done better? Did you feel that your emotions got the better of you? All of these things are practices. It takes awareness to realize what's happening underneath that anger or that passivity uh, that makes you speak in the way that you speak. Number six, 
What would you do differently next time? How might you be able to speak to this person next time or to any person in the confrontation and do it in a way that was assertive and not swinging to either side of the pendulum? What steps would you take? What would that sound like? Which is my seventh question to you. What would that sound like? Would it not be being overly loud about being angry in your tone? Would it be about actually then speaking up for yourself, but in a, in a neutral way or in an assertive, confident way without being timid or weak? Did you feel that you were mumbling your words? How could you have practiced that so that you are clearer the next time that you want to be? And my last question to you is, what would your tone be? Again, if you're passive, the tone might be a little reserved, a little quiet, a little timid. There might be a little shaking to your voice. If you're aggressive, it might be loud and overbearing and sound angry and sound, uh, the, one of my favorite words, stentorian, that you're very loud and attacking somebody. How can you find that happy medium of being assertive, getting what you want, or at least standing up for what you want? So look at those questions and answer those questions and see what it's like for you. The next thing I want you to do is, how often do you have these confrontations? Are they often? Do you find yourself oftentimes leaving a situation and you think, well, that person was a total jerk and I'm done with them? Granted, we're human beings. It's a big world out there. We have our different feelings and different emotions and different times of the day where we feel differently. And sometimes when we interact with people, it can be an experience that we didn't like. But the question is, if we're having lots of those experiences, what's the common denominator there? Is it that I'm always in a bad mood or that I'm always fearful? Or that I'm not going to get what I want? That this person somehow is going to take away what I, what I need and want? Look at those underlying factors. In all of this, I'm helping you or I want to help you be a kind of communicator that allows you to stand up for yourself, own the room, or at least own your space in this world, and speak confidently, speak assertively, without burning bridges, without sabotaging friendships, and trying to be the best person that you can be, the best speaker that you can be, so that you can experience all the possibilities that are open to you in this life. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.